if you're a heat and nursing technician or even a salesperson, why do you need to figure out some buyer's motives in your sales process? And why does it matter? This is a fantastic question. I'm Scott Sullivan Bell. Come to you live for HVAC Technicians and Sales Secrets on a perfect day to talk about sales and business and a fantastic day to talk about you. I'm coming to you live from Sacramento. All right, so you are going to meet with a hundred buyers, hundred potential clients. And in that, there's probably 10-ish, 20-ish that really have some extra motives in, in the sales process. This is the dude or the chick that when you show up, when you go to meet with them, when you jump on a Zoom, they're like, hey, sorry to waste your time. Well, the deal's already been done. They recognize that they're they're coming to you for expert advice. They're coming to you for a motive and they realize, they, they're like, I understand there's something going on here. This is the person who has already made their buying decision, right? They're confirming a buying decision they've already made. Uh, in the world of heating and air cells, plumbing, roofing, electrical, this is the person who has a, a vendor in mind already, right? They already know who they're going to use. They're just confirming that they're getting a good deal from this company. They, they really have no um, desire to do business with you. They really have no, no real... All you are is just, is that number close to what it should be? And, and we're going to be good. So I don't want to say this is every buyer because it'll poison you. I do want to say that there are some buyers out there that their game is to get something from you. It is information about the product, the service, the issue that they're having, or the amount to see if it's close to what they have magically in their head. And you do have to work through this the right way. There are questions that you can ask, but before we do that, you should absolutely join my email publication right here. Go to this URL, type it into a browser. It'll ask you for your name, your email address, maybe your phone number. I'll send you emails, right? You'll love it. It'll be fantastic. So how you deal with this is really important. And I'm going to give you some of my questions. <laughs> Son's in the perfect position. <laughs> Got my uh, change of oil stamp right there. I'm going to give you some of my questions, and you can modify them and make them work for you. And, you know, you don't have to say it my way. Figure out your way to say it. Remember, I may say something way up here, what you consider crazy town, and you're like, I need to be over here in safety zone. Cool. No problem, right? Come to crazy town with me. See if you can say it that way, and if not, back off. And so let's, let's say that uh, somebody comes to me and goes, hey, Scott, you know, sorry to waste your time. I'm going to ask, what was the outcome that you were hoping for for meeting with me? Okay. I want to, I want to know, I want to get their, their understanding. What's the outcome that you were hoping for? And hope isn't a strategy. This is why it's hope. Well, I was hoping that you would confirm a price. Okay. Confirm a price for what? Well, I've got a vendor. Okay. Well, it sounds like you've got a good relationship. Like you see, I'm, I'm turning this. What were you hoping for? What was the outcome you were hoping for into a series of questions? What were you hoping for? What were you hoping to achieve? Well, I wanted to confirm that they were giving me a good deal. Well, do you trust this company? Yes. I have questions and I have concerns. If you were trying to validate a price, you've had a long-term relationship. Based upon what you're sharing with me, is there an opportunity for us to work together? And if it's not an instant yes, or it's like, mm, eh, uh, then you, you know what? You, you probably don't have an opportunity. And then you can choose what to do accordingly. You can practice on the person. You can call them out. You can give a presentation. You can bounce out of the call, depending upon what you want to do. If, if somebody goes, hey, Scott, sorry to waste your time. I'm like, how you start a relationship is super important in my world. If that's how you're going to start a relationship, thinking this, thinking this, just so you know, thinking this, I got to figure out what's going on here. Right? I can get poisoned. I can go down the path of saying, that, hey, this buyer is a liar. Until I figure out what their motive is, I can't make a judgment. I got to erase all this stuff that's going on in my head, just like you do. And so what ends up happening is this type of call typically is grouped together. Like if you look at uh, statistics and you take like a screen and you scatter shot your calls of like how many are really good, they might be up here. And then you take a scatter shot of how many are not so good, they may be over here. And then like you may have a scatter shot of like buyers. I hate to say this, buyers are liars, right? I you just got to figure out what their motive is. And if you can figure out your motive, it's the only way you're going to figure this out is by asking questions. 
And this is where you got to get really good. Like on a scale of one to 10, are you willing to do business with somebody else? One being yes, or one being no, 10 being yes. And you can't pick seven. Be aware that when somebody comes at you and they're throwing some wacky position, you have to be willing to deal with it. Now, I'm going to give you a part two on this video. Let's say that you, you meet with somebody and you meet with them and they're like, I just want you to give me a price. I don't want a presentation. Well, now you got to figure out why that is, right? I, I might come across and say, hey, I've got a couple of concerns and stop talking, right? I, I got a couple of concerns. And then they come back and say, what? And I'm like, my best clients don't do this to me. My very best clients don't do this to me. And my concern is, is the only thing that I'm here to do is confirm a buying decision you've already made. I'm only here to confirm that you got a deal from a vendor. My only, my concern is the only reason I'm here is to give you a piece of information that you're missing. And I'm an expert. I have a lot of time, energy, and effort put into my craft and my skill. And I, I don't do that, right? My answer may not be your answer, but take and go, hey, here's what's going to happen. Here's, here's a strategy that you could use. If I'm all the way up here for you, right? And you're like, I would never, ever, ever do it that way. Where is your slot? Like if I'm too far up here, where is your version of like right here? And, and sit down and think about like, okay, somebody's going to come to me and say, hey, I just want a number. I don't want a presentation. You got to start asking why. Like, wait a minute, time out. Like, I've got extra warranties and guarantees. I've got things that I've got to live by. And if you're telling me to just give you a number, I really do have concerns. And these concerns are what happens on fulfillment if you're not happy? And that may be a question you ask. Okay, great. Let's just say for a second that I do give you a number, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Mr. and Mrs. Jones. What happens upon fulfillment and you're not happy? Do I get to say, sorry, dude, you just asked me to give you a number. Sorry, Chica, you just said just give me a number. That's probably not going to hold up anywhere. So... In order for me to fulfill my roles and responsibilities, we got a minimal series of questions that we've got to ask. And the more impatient that this person becomes, the more you're peeling back the layers of the onion going, okay, there's something going on here. It's all the way up here. There's something going on here. And I really got to figure out what this is. I remember a time where I met with this guy, I was running a heating and air lead and we sit down and he goes, all right, well, let's get to it. How much? I'm like, how much for what? And he says, a system. And I said, look, man, I got a series of questions that I got to go through. I don't want that. I just want a price. Oh, great. A million bucks. And, you know, he gets really agitated. Stop screwing with me. I'm like, hey, a million dollars is going to cover any problem that I make if you don't want to answer questions. And the lead that I was running for was a big box store. It was a big box store. And, you know, they wanted you to kiss the butts of the people that they met with. And like, I'm borderline already frustrated with this guy. And then it just turns into, okay, you think that my only role and responsibility is to come out, look at a title tag, look at the information and go $18,000. So I go down this path. I'm like, what's the outcome you wanted today? I just wanted somebody to show up and give me a number. I'm like, well, fantastic. I don't know what you need, right? You can't go to the doctor and say, I need some prescription for amoxicillin. They're going to go through, they're going to weigh you. I don't know why doctors always like to weigh you. They're like, they're step on the scale. And I'm like, I get it. I'm fat, <laughs> right? I get it. I'm overweight. Step on the scale, answer the questions. Let me take your temperature, you know, stick out your tongue. Let me look in your ear. Like there's diagnostics to every industry and every service. And you have to learn how to give pushback by asking the proper question, right? Your question may not be exactly my question, but what you need to know is you have a role and responsibility to figure out what the best option is for somebody. And when they start giving you the motive, like just, I'm sorry, I wasted your time, or I feel like I'm wasting your time. Like evidently they thought it was okay. They still had you come out. They still had you meet. They still had you jump on a Zoom meeting. Start figuring out the motives by asking really good questions. And once again, if my question is too hard, high up here for you, back it off and find one that's uh, good for you. You got one of three things to do from here. Just one of three. Find the subscribe button, click on it. And every time I send out a video, you get an update. Two, hit follow. Three, share this video with a friend. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.